Hi, it's Mark Oster again. I just wanted to show you how GitHub is used by the Open Source Malaria Initiative. This will be a quick one today. I think um, it's a piece of software that is really commonly used by software developers. However, it's being used in a slightly sort of unusual way by the Open Source Malaria Initiative. So I thought maybe uh, a few pointers as to how to use it might be in order. Okay, so firstly, if you haven't signed up for an account, then it's very simple. Go to the uh, GitHub page and click on sign up and choose a username, put in your email and a password, sign up, and that's it. You're pretty much done. There's a few um, settings you can change. You can put in some extra information such as your own web page and your affiliations and so on, but really the account sign up is very straightforward. Okay, so once you've created an account, then you'll be able to use GitHub. So a few notes about what GitHub is. It's mainly used by software developers for um, managing version control and development of new software. Uh, although it can be used in a variety of different contexts, and the way it's being used by the Open Source Malaria Initiative is as a collaboration tool. So it can be used to update people on where things are at, to suggest new molecules, to put forward new ideas, to share data and so on. Um, so that's a slightly unusual use for it and I guess that's why I've created this video. So once you've made an account then you'll have a, probably a screen that looks a bit different to mine but we can find the open source malaria pages by just uh, doing a search. There we go. And uh, once we've done that, it should come up with uh, a number of different repositories. So each sort of um, project uh, involves a, a repository on GitHub. So if you look here, there's the Open Source Malaria. Um, has a number of different repositories. So if I click on that, the OSM to-do list, I'll come to this in a moment. It's the main place that you really want to be coming to if you're involved in this, um, in this particular initiative. Just backing out a little bit, Open Source Malaria is um, an organization within the GitHub sy system and it has a number of different repositories. So the current status in 2017 is that most of the work in this initiative is involved in the Series 4 compounds. Um, so there's a number of repositories that are related to that. There's a, a paper being written up on this. And the initiative is actually using GitHub to write that paper, which is a really interesting way to use the system. However, as I said, it's the to-do list, which I think is where people really want to be involved. However, I think it's really the to-do list repository, which is where you want to be looking at if you're just getting involved in this initiative. Okay, so if we click on that repository, it brings up a uh, GitHub repos repository here. And when you first sign into GitHub as a new user and you're interested in OSM, first things you want to do are to star and watch this repository. So yours look different. I've already starred uh, this particular repository. I'm already watching it. So there's a subtle difference between these two. The star, if you star a repository, it's saying that you're interested in this repository. You want to give some sort of kudos to the people who are involved with it and who have set it up and um, you want to sort of bookmark it so that if you come back to GitHub you can easily get to it by going to uh, your little drop down here and looking at your stars. However, if you want to actually follow what happens within the repository and, and be updated when new uh, issues are being created and when there's new information being posted to issues, then you want to watch the repository. So you want to click on this one. So I'd really recommend new students and, and staff working on the, the OSM initiative to both star and to watch this um, repository. Okay, so once you've starred and, and watched the repository, then you'll um, the first thing you'll be looking at is this code tab here. And underneath that, there's uh, a number of different links so the to the synaptic leap, uh, the wiki for um, the open source malaria initiative, 
Google Plus pages, uh, open source lab notebooks, and the uh, electronic lab notebook for uh, Edwin, who's uh, a PhD student at the University of Sydney, who's doing a lot of work in this area. However, to see where things are currently at with the open source malaria uh, initiative, it's the issues that you want to be looking at. So if we click on issues here, this is really where all the discussion is uh, underway for this initiative. And you'll see that there's six issues that I've um, set up, that I've opened uh, within the open source malaria to-do to list. And these are the six different Griffith University projects that uh, students under my supervision in trimester 2, 2017, at Griffith University are working on. Okay, so how do you navigate around the issues on the open source malaria to-do list repository? So if you click on one of the issues, it will take you to the uh, issue itself. Now there's two types of issues really, there's open and closed. So when someone uh, opens an issue then it's going to be flagged with this little green box here. And when the issue is uh, deemed to be resolved then it can be closed. Um, and closed issues are not uh, part of the issue list by default. When you search here there's an automatic filter applied uh, that it is an issue and it is open. So if you cl change this to closed then it will come up with all of the closed issues. And so that, for example, there's an issue that I opened some time ago, just asking where a newcomer to the initiative would start. And that gave me a bit of an idea about how to get started with the OSM initiative. However, we're more interested in the open issues, so we'll go back to that, go back to one of these issues. Now, um, the issue is really a, a series of posts by various people, it could be uh, a number of different people, it could be one person, uh, there could be questions, they could be uh, discussing biological data or proposing new molecules to synthesize. What I've used it as, um, each issue that I've posted so far uh, of these six um, GU projects just describes the project and then links to a bunch of really useful material for people working on that particular project. So if we navigate around this issue, I've um, showing the scheme associated with the particular project. So this is trying to make a particular molecule. Uh, I'll go to one of the other um, projects. So this one here, project four, is targeting the heterooxidiazole, um, which is one of the uh, desirable compounds not yet synthesized within the open source malaria initiative. So I've posted a scheme showing how we want to make this molecule some uh, background to why it's of interest to us, um, a little bit more background showing um, links to GitHub issues that have been discussed previously related to this project, links to papers related to certain steps within the synthesis, and uh, then I've got further links to particular reactions. So we've got some uh, electronic lab notebook entries, and some papers that are precedent for particular synthetic steps that we want to use in our synthetic uh, sequence. Then I've got links to other uh, groups, electronic lab notebooks, uh, some previous synthetic planning by other groups, and uh, early discussion of our um, contributions to the OSM at Griffith University. Below that we've got a link to the desirable compounds not yet synthesized on the OSM wiki. And I've put a file in here which is a zip file with the uh, chemical structures and the um, reaction scheme in both ChemDraw and Marvin Sketch formats. And then finally down the bottom here we've got the strings associated. I've just put in the strings associated with the target compound as our main target which is a um, para uh, difluoromethoxy compounds. So I've just got the strings associated with that particular compound, uh, both the sort of common name, uh, an inchy key, an inchy string, and then a smile string. And as you can see, I've ended that particular um, post on this issue. So I've opened the issue with this first post, and then other people have commented on that uh, first post. So we've got um, some discussion of uh, other ways of linking a oxidizole to the core of that molecule 
and some further discussion about uh, that particular approach. And then um, uh, Matthew Todd at the University of Sydney has uh, talked about it a bit further and then um, assigned that particular um, He's assigned that particular issue uh, to me because I guess um, I'm taking responsibility for this particular project and, th and therefore this issue within the repository. And he's added a couple of labels to it. So a label of being synthesized now and a label of series four because it's uh, one of the triazolopyrazine uh, series four compounds. Okay, so that's a bit of a summary of what an issue looks like. What about if you want to contribute to an issue? And this is really, you know, how you get involved with the Open Source Malaria Initiative. It's very simple. You can just go to the bottom of one of the issues that's already been created. And just when you're logged into GitHub, you can just start typing into the comment box here. So, for example, if you had a suggestion about how to do one of these synthetic steps differently, or you want to question a particular step or suggest um, any facet of uh, this particular issue, then you can just dive in here and start commenting away. Now, there's a few things I'd like to note about if you're going to contribute to an issue, then GitHub uses a particular um, system for contributing to these issues, which is a flavor of Markdown. So Markdown is a very simple uh, way of um, stylizing your content that you're putting into a uh, comment in such a way you can make it look much more uh, reader friendly. So for example, we can make things bold. So you can uh, type your comment, select it, and then just click on the B icon to make it bold. And you'll notice that now it's been surrounded by uh, double asterisks. And this is a, sort of a markup system, or they call it a GitHub flavored markdown. Okay, so in other words, if you wanted to make something bold, you don't have to click on the little bold icon here. You can just type it in directly if you're, you know, wanting to just use uh, keyboard shortcuts. So um, we can put double asterisk. This is bold. And close it off with double asterisk. So it's marked up at either end of the particular section you want to mark up. And you can actually preview what your post will look like uh, by clicking on the preview box here. If you want to use italics, you can use the same thing. So the, the same sort of approach. So italics, we can highlight that and click on italics. Uh, some normal text. And once again, the um, the system or the, the method for making these it things italics is just to put an underscore at the start of where you want the italics to start. And then to put an underscore at the end. And if we preview that, you can see that we've now got some italicized text. Now there are lots more you can do with a GitHub flavor markdown. I'm not going to go through all of it. Uh, that's just a couple of examples. Uh, you can also use keyboard shortcuts. So you know you'll, you'll probably find that's very uh, handy if you're used to using Microsoft Word. You can just use uh, Control I and Control B or Apple I and Apple B uh, on a Mac. Um, and so if you if I do that now, then I'll get uh, with control I, I'll get double underscores, and then my cursor is inserted between them. So uh, italics in the middle uh, here. And I can move my cursor past that if I like. Or once again, if I've got something highlighted, then if I select that and then use keyboard shortcuts, then it can be uh, made bold and uh, italicized if we like. So there we go. Now, that, that just makes things look a bit prettier. And it does actually really help to, um, I think, make your comments much more readable. But the most powerful aspects of using GitHub are uh, over here. So if you're replying to a particular comment that may be up the thread a bit higher, so for example, if you want to reply to something I set up here, you might want to actually uh, highlight that and copy it to the clipboard and then uh, paste it like so. But we want that to really stand out as being uh, a previous comment uh, higher up on the thread. So you can highlight that and just use these little, little quotation marks and it will put a um, little uh, bracket there that then uh, 
marks that up as being a quotation. And it'll be obvious that you're quote, quoting from someone else's uh, comment higher up on the thread. OK, so if you're familiar with HTML, you can also use uh, HTML markup to modify the text. So for example, if we wanted to make a formula look more pretty, we can have H2O. Everyone will understand that, so it's not really necessary. But we can put in some HTML markup and uh, make that into a subscript too. And there we've got our nice looking H, um, H2O. OK, what I think is most important though is to insert relevant links into your comments. So there's a very simple um, system for doing this. If you already have some text, so a link here, for example, and then you highlight that and click on the link button, it will change it so that your text becomes uh, placed into square brackets here, and then a uh, pair of normal rounded parentheses is placed around a URL. So that's just a placeholder at the moment, but if we wanted to, we could then get a website and grab the URL, so I'll copy that, and paste it into that set of brackets there, and that will now be a hyperlink. And that will be really useful to people using your um, comments in the issue here if you, that you wanted to link to a chemical procedure or to a paper or to something else like that. Now, also really handy for uh, the OSM uh, contributors is to link to other issues. So uh, you can find the issue and you can just paste in the number. So this is very easily done by putting a hash at the front and then placing the number. So this is issue 521. So I've got other issues related to other projects. So GU Project 5 is uh, talked about at issue 522. So if I put that in there now and I look at how this will uh, finally look, it's now um, a hyperlink to that particular issue. Um, so that's very easy to do. You can put, you can click on that little thing there, but all it does is just put in that um, hash symbol so you can start uh, finding the particular issue that you're interested in. And then finally, the uh, other very useful thing you can do in terms of GitHub uh, linking is to at someone. And so what this does is it uh, mentions them. So it's at mention. So you put in an at symbol and then someone's GitHub username and it will then draw attention to that user. So even if they're actually not following that particular uh, thread, uh, they'll be alerted that they have been mentioned within a particular thread on GitHub and then they'll be able to go and look and see what is uh, what people are saying that they've linked to their uh, username. So for example, if uh, you wanted to get my attention, then you would just put my GitHub handle, handle at mcosta, and that will draw my attention that uh, you've mentioned me within your particular comment on this issue. Another really useful thing you can do is to dump files into your comment. So GitHub can work with a whole range of different file types. And really uh, nicely, if it's an image, then it will be inserted in line into your comment. So you can do things like put a reaction scheme into your comment to make it very uh, easy to follow what you're talking about. Um, so this is really easy to do. Just drag and drop. So if I go to um, a folder where I've got some uh, files. Here's a picture here we took earlier today of the uh, Griffiths Uni OSM team for this trimester, trimester two. If I just uh, drag that across, then that'll be uploaded and then auto-magically uh, inserted into the comment in line. So if I preview that uh, and give it a bit of time to uh, render, then we should be able to see that, uh, yeah, so it's a fairly big uh, file. So uh, eventually you see that the picture is inserted, uh, inserted in line. Okay, so let's go back here. You can also dump in other files. You might find some files types aren't supported. In that case, the general thing you want to do is to add them to a zip. So if you zip them up into um, a zip file, then that can be dragged across to um, the GitHub comment. 
and then they'll automatically generate a uh, hyperlink to that particular file. So that will render as the file name, uh, automatically render as the file name, and then link to that file so that it can be downloaded to the computer of wh whoever's looking at this uh, particular issue. Uh, you can change all that if you like. You can change the description here, um, but obviously if you're just dragging in a file, you don't want to change in the, um, uh, the URL. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you about adding to an already open issue. Uh, so I'll just briefly show you about how you can open a new issue. Okay, so you can do this on, I think, pretty much any page, uh, but I'll go back, we'll get rid of this uh, comment here by just uh, navigating away from that page. And then, uh, so for example, on the list of issues page here, we can click on new issue, and it brings up this page here, and then we just give it a title, so we can say, uh, fantastic new compound. And uh, then we can write in our comment exactly what we want to say. So um, uh, I have a proposal for a great new compound. And then we can put in whatever we like and then just click new, new issue. And when we go and we do that, then it will then turn up on the to-do list uh, under issues here. It'll be a new issue. Um, and that can be um, commented on by anyone else. It can be uh, given labels and uh, assigned to particular people and so on. Okay, so that's all I want to tell you about how to use GitHub as an open source malaria contributor. Really hope to see you on there, um, contributing your fantastic ideas and telling us all about your research. Bye for now.